Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to spin up a Lambda with Terraform. This is called MyNodeLambda. We're going to deploy this code here, so this JavaScript or Node code that we're going to be able to invoke. And I'm also going to show you how to set it up so we can monitor it, so we'll be able to see when it was invoked. And also, that'll allow us to view the logs in CloudWatch, so we can see the event coming in. And I'm going to show you how to build all of this from scratch using Terraform. So before we begin coding this, I'm going to assume that you have your AWS CLI configured, so that means your profile access keys, things like that. And I'm also gonna assume that you have Terraform installed. But if you got both of those, then you're good to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is just work inside this file called main.tf. And this file is gonna contain all our Terraform code to build our Lambda. So the first thing we're gonna do, I'll paste it in block by block and go over what's going on. So basically this block right here creates the Lambda function and also uploads the zip package. So we're essentially gonna zip up our JavaScript code into a zip file and then deploy it. And we can see that this resource takes some arguments and the first one is function name, which will be the name of the Lambda, which we'll see in the console. The file name, which is the, na the file name of our code that we're gonna deploy to the Lambda. Then we have the handler, so index.handler. And this is the method within your code that AWS Lambda calls. So we're gonna have an index.js file. And in here, we're gonna have a function called handler like this that we're gonna export. Um, we'll do that a bit later. And so then it'll be the file name, so index, and then the name of the function, which is handler. So that's why we have index.handler for this. Next, we have the runtime, which is going to be node version 18 for me. Um, I believe I'm also working with node version 18 here, so I can see that listed here. And then finally, we have our role right here. And that is basically the IAM role that allows Lambda, that allows the Lambda to essentially do its thing. And so more on roles, if you don't know, in AWS, Lambda functions need permissions to interact with other AWS services. For example, to write logs to CloudWatch or read from an S3 bucket. And this is where IAM roles come in. So right here, we've defined a role for our Lambda function. And what this essentially means is that we are giving our Lambda permission to do certain things. So this role that right here that we'll create in a second will contain a set of permissions or policies that tell AWS what your Lambda is allowed to do. So now let's create this role. So I'm just gonna paste this in. So this right here, so we have AWS IAM role, which is this resource, and then the name, we called it Lambda exec, and then the ARN or the Amazon resource name, which is essentially just an identifier. But so now we're gonna define this role, which will allow our Lambda to just do its thing essentially. So more on here, we just provide it a name. Then we have assume role policy right here. And this is a, also known as a trust policy. And what it tells AWS is essentially that this IAM role is allowed to be assumed by the AWS Lambda. So more in depth, we have our version, which is October 17th, 2012, which I think is the pretty standard that you'll usually see that, that version. Then we have this statement, which is an array of statements. And the first one is an action, which we set to assume role. And what this assume role right here does is it allows another AWS service like a Lambda to become this role. Then we have the effect, which is allow, so we're allowing it. The principle specifies who is allowed to assume the role, and in this case, it's the Lambda itself, which we identify by the service name, which is lambda amazonaws.com, and that's all we need to do for creating our resource, and then we assign, or creating our role, and then we assign it to our Lambda. So we're done with that, but now we have this role, but we need to attach some permissions to it. So basically, when a Lambda function runs, it doesn't use your personal AWS credentials. Instead, it assumes an IAM role that you define, which is the one that we defined right here. And that role gives the Lambda permissions it needs to interact with other AWS services. And we give a role, so we give this role here permissions by attaching policies to it. And you might've guessed, we're gonna do that with another AWS resource. So right down here, we're creating a resource, which is AWS IAM role policy attachment. And we're just gonna call it Lambda logging. But what it does, is it uses this AWS Lambda basic execution role, which essentially is the default functionality or basic functionality that a Lambda needs. So such as logging to CloudWatch whenever it receives an event. And of course, this is very helpful for debugging. And the way we attach the two is with role right here. So this is the role right here. We attach it right here by its name, which we called Lambda exec role. And that's all it needs infrastructure wise to get up and running. So the next thing we need to do is just add the code that we want to, to be deployed to this Lambda. And the name for the code that you deploy to a Lambda is called the handler, 
which is essentially the entry point for your AWS Lambda function. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, what I'm going to do is just in this index.js file, I'm just going to paste in this handler function. And remember, it's referenced in our code here by index.handler, which is the file name index, and then handler. And what it does is it'll just receive an event. And I'm actually going to log out this event too. So Lambda invoked the event, and then we just return some information. So this is the function that will be called whenever our Lambda is invoked. So all we need to do now is just zip this up, which on Mac you can easily do, which is zip. And then the name, we're going to call it lambda.zip, and then index.js. If I run this, here's our lambda.zip file, which needs to match the name inside our file name, which we, of course, called lambda.zip. So basically, when you deploy a Lambda function manually or via tools like Terraform, um, just serverless framework, or even the AWS CLI, you typically provide a zip archive containing your function code and its dependencies. You can also use Docker images, things like that, but we're just going to be sticking with a zip file for now. And now all we need to do is just run some Terraform commands to build this infrastructure and deploy our code. And the first one is going to be Terraform init. And you can see what it's doing right now is it's installing the latest version of AWS because we haven't listed in here um, a Terraform block with required providers and specifying a version for the for AWS, which is of course where we get all these functions from or all these resources from. So it's just going to pull the latest version, which is version 6.3.0. And after we've done that, I'm just going to run a Terraform apply. Actually, before I do this, let me show you um, how I have no functions in here. And also make sure you're in the correct region. So for me, it's it's London EUS2, and we have zero functions. And then after I run this Terraform apply, we can see all the state file, lock file, everything being created here. So it's going to take a bit of time. And what I have is no credentials find, found, and it's because I have my credentials set, but I don't believe I have a profile. So I'm going to have to do, I'm just going to set it on the command line where my profile is Terraform. That's the name of my profile I just made. And then Terraform apply. Let's see if it works now. There we go. So now we can see that we have three resources that we want to add, which, and this is all the information provided, um, which I'm not going to go too in depth here. But essentially, yes, we want to apply this. We can see it's all being created. Sweet. And so there we go. So our resources have been added. And now if I go in here and let's refresh this, here we are. Here's it's called my node lambda. We click into here. We can see the name of it, which is of course what we provided in our Terraform code. And then if we click on our index.js file, here is also our code. And now say we just want to test it. Just go over to test. Run this right here. What we get out is the status code, everything we returned. And now let's go to monitor. Refresh this. Might take a bit of time for this to show up, but if we look in our CloudWatch logs, we can see right here at the time it was invoked. And then here is what we logged out. So we lambda invoked. That came from our handler function right here, where we did lambda evoked and then logged out the event. I want to thank you for liking and subscribing. Check out my courses and software in the description and take it easy.